Hey guys, me again with a special YouTube video. Uh, you could probably barely see it, but up there above uh, my name and the picture of Gur from Invader Zim, we have officially reached 316 subscribers. And a little while back, I put out a, a video saying that um, the 300 subscriber special would be inbound, and that's what this video is here. Uh, so to start off our 300 subscriber special, I would like to thank each and every single one of you personally for being here on the channel to support me and my endeavors, uh, whether it be the Lego guns that I make, the other uh, Lego creations that I make, like uh, Lego Star Wars, things like that, uh, some of the gaming clips that you might have seen. Um, I'm just now getting into taking all the clips that I get off of my uh, Xbox One and just putting them into random videos so that you guys can see some of the funny things that happen, some of the skill things that happen, different things like that that are just a lot uh, of fun to watch other people do and whatnot. Um, so, like I said, the first part of this video is me wanting to uh, thank each and every single one of you personally for being here to support me and my channel. The second part of the video is going to be a little bit of an update to this website. Um, yesterday was August the 7th and I was able to update all of those. So um, all four of those are now on the website. Um, and uh, as you can see, the list above it is still pretty long and I do need to add that as well. Uh, and now then the third part of the video is going to be a, another update and a better sneak peek at the Blue Jay Industries Vector X. This is a 5.56 carbine version of the Vector inspired by some of the uh, G56 concept art that is going on. Uh, the G56 concept art is basically just an, um, a 5.56 version of a vector made by H and K that someone drew up for um just like to have fun basically. Um so I, I kinda took some ideas from that and I took the the basic vector build and I went ahead and I added on an uh sixteen inch barrel that's legal for civilians to have. Uh obviously this is the military version so it's gonna have full auto, two round burst, semi auto, things like that, but the uh civilian legal version is only gonna have the your semi auto um, when you buy it, you can always get a, a tax stamp and whatnot to uh, convert it over to um, full auto, things like that. Uh, and this one has a folding stock and different things like that, uh, but this is for another video when we do a full review of this itself. Um, the color scheme, the black upper receiver and then the bright, bright neon blue um, highlights that you're seeing are from Pixel Bricks. P-I-X-E-L-B-R-I-X. -E he decided it when uh, I was in the Google Hangouts chat and I asked what um, he wanted, or basically what color the uh, the group wanted, and he was the only one on at the time, and he said that he really wanted to see one in a bright neon blue, so I went ahead and did that itself. Um, so this is just a little bit more of a sneak peek of the upcoming model. Um, I'll do a video on this later. There's still a bunch of other guns that need videos, and the tablet here has decent uh, recording quality of the computer screen if I was able to just set it up right to do so. Um, so now we're going to move on to the actual subscriber special. So if any of you don't know, um, I don't know if this is the largest LEGO gun arsenal in the world, but I do have a fairly extensive arsenal of weapons. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and give you a little bit of background about each of the weapons themselves and um, some of the building techniques, some of the different uh, inspirations behind them, the specifications, different things like that. Um, but I'm going to do that in another part of the video that's going to be attached to this one so that I can get the maximum recording time out of the tablet. So I'll see you guys in that part of the video. Alright, so this is part 4 of my 300 subscriber special. It's going to be in the same video, so don't worry about that. Uh, but like I said in the, the previous first part, uh, where we went over parts 1 through 3, um, I was going to go over every single LEGO gun that we have in the arsenal and give you guys a little bit of details 
about each and every single one of them. So we're going to start from the left and work our way right. Uh, so on the left we have the Beretta 23R from Black Ops 2. This is a three shot nine millimeter uh, handgun, machine pistol, uh, a burst handgun if you want. Um, has 15 rounds in the magazine, um, a pretty high rate of fire, pretty decent reload. It was one of my favorite guns to use in the game itself, other than uh, the TAC-45. Uh, at one point in time, I did like the FN Herstal 5.7 when we were uh, getting that up to uh, Diamond camouflage and whatnot for completionist's sake. But after we completed Diamond, I went immediately right back to the Beretta 23R as my sidearm. The red and black gun in the middle is the Glock 18. Uh, this is not a compensated version of it. It's just a standard Glock 18. It does not have uh, the uh, holes cut up in the top of the slide. It does not have the compensator at the end of it. Um, this is, again, another 9mm um, handgun. And this one is select fire between semi-auto and full-auto. Um, it's one of the few of its kind. Um, they really don't sell them anymore. The only way to get a, a kind of like a Glock 18 is to take a Glock 17 and uh, convert it over to uh, fire full auto, and that requires paperwork and uh, tax stamps and different things like that. Um, the gun on the far right is the Maneba M9. It is a Japanese, um, it's basically a machine pistol, how small it is, but uh, all it really is, is a 9mm uh, micro Uzi, which is the smallest of the Uzi family. It goes Uzi, mini Uzi, and then micro Uzi, and the micro Uzi is the smallest version. Um, and it has an extended barrel on it, as well as a added front foregrip. Uh, these are used by the uh, Japanese Self-Defense Force, the JSDF, uh, for counterterrorism operations, small buildings, different things like that. Uh, you might remember seeing these in uh, Modern Warfare 3. They were a pretty popular uh, submachine gun to use with the thermal sight and different things like that. Um, this one's in all black. It's got the gray highlights on it. It's got pretty much all the working features on it that it needs. Um, and then when I build it on LDD, I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to add the working magazine release, the grip safety, and the fire slash safety selector. Um, Hopefully I'll be able to do that. Uh, so going up the stand, usually right above the Xbox One would be the PDW57, but I moved it out so we could see it a little bit better. So we're going to go up on higher to the three weapons up top. Um, I count them as three. You guys might count them as two and a half uh, because um, one of them is just the upper receiver. But we're going to start on left and work our way right like we usually do. So the one on the left is Blue Jay Industries M4 PDW Nikolai Yakovich version. Um, it is a 50 Beowulf uh, M4 PDW. It packs quite a punch, a lot of recoil. Um, it's got the Peacekeeper styled stock on it, and as you can see, the base of it has a lot of the minifigures that I have on it. Uh, over there on the right, the full gun up higher is the Effen Herstal Scar PDW with a standard stock on it. And then the upper receiver below it is the Effen Herstal Scar HAMR, which is also from Black Ops 2. And the, uh, the cool thing is the upper receiver for the PDW can be removed, and the stock can as well be removed. And then you can take the hammer receiver and put that up on top of your uh, lower receiver, and then put the stock up on your hammer receiver, and then boom, you have a HAMR. Um, so that's really cool. So it's basically interchangeable. So it's uh, two guns in one. Uh, and that's the kind of the cool thing there. Um, like I said, the M4 PDW is 50 Beowulf. Uh, and then the PDW and the HAMR are both 5.56 by 45 uh, firearms. And now we're going to swivel on over to here. And this is where I moved the PDW 57 over to. Um, so we're going to start left to right like we've been doing. Um, so the black and red thing is the PDW-57, again, from Black Ops 2. Quite a few weapons from Black Ops 2. Um, it's basically a more futuristic version of the FN Hostel P90, uh, assuming it's uh, 5.7 in it. Um, in the title, its name, basically. Uh, 
we as the young community assume that this also fires the 57 by 23 uh, bullet. It's an armor penetrating bullet. It's really small, has almost no recoil, different things like that. Um, that weapon is definitely really cool because uh, I changed up the looks a little bit. The stock is now on the inside of the weapon instead of on the outside. Uh, the charging handle works like it's supposed to. It stays flush with the receiver. Uh, it retracts because it's on a rubber band. Uh, different things like that. The weapon that is gray and black on the red stand beside it is the H&K MP7. It shoots, again, another specialized cartridge for defeating um, body armor, except with um, almost no, no recoil, basically. It's real small. Uh, that was a pretty fun build to do. It looks really nice. feels really good in the hand. Um, I opted out to leave the foregrip off of this one. Instead, I replaced it with a rail. Uh, it has a little bit longer barrel on the end of it, and then the upper receiver itself is a little bit longer. The stock extends to like absolutely ridiculous ranges. That's a great, great stock on it. I love it. Uh, different things like that. And then the blue gun in the background is the uh, most recent LEGO model that I've built. That is the uh, Mosin Degant Russian bolt action sniper rifle. Um, you can see it's covered up by the curtain a little bit. There is no bolt in it. Uh, when I put the Mosin Degant up for display, the bolt fell out of it because, again, the bolt was not uh, secure in it. And when the bolt fell out of it, it fell behind the bookshelf, and I do not feel like moving the bookshelf to get the bolt itself. So the bolt for that is forever lost until I finally get up and move the bookshelf. Uh, that is a prototype Mosin Nagant. Uh, I will be making a uh, much, much better version on the LDD, the LEGO program online. So we've already gone over the Beretta 23R, the Glock 18, the Mendeba M9, the M4 PDW Nikolai Yakovich's version, the FN Herstal Scar PDW, the FN Herstal Scar HAMR, the HK MP7, the Mosin Nagant, and then Black Ops 2's MP or PDW 57. So that's already one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine weapons right there uh, already in the, this arsenal. So moving on to the actual shelves of the bookshelf. On the top shelf, we have from left to right once more the FN Herstal. P90. This is again another 5.7 uh, bullet firing weapon, 5.7 by 23. Um, the real cool thing about this one is the blue and black paint scheme. It feels really nice in your hand. Um, there are a few things that I changed about it on the LDD model. The LDD model is um, on the website, I believe. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, it definitely feels really good in your hand, um, and I, I like to pick it up and play around with it a little bit because it does feel real nice. Um, that there is the VBR PDW. It's a Belgian company uh, PDW that you see a little bit in um, Call of Duty uh, every once in a while. It's really unique in the fact that it has um, a pretty long stock on it, to be honest. Um, it's for basically going to... Literally, the, the company itself said it was for uh, foreign diplomats that went to um, non-developed countries and needed something real small to protect themselves with, uh, but at the same time could be really sustained in uh, full fire or full auto firing modes, which would be why the stock is so long so that you can shoulder it and then you get your hands around it real easy. And that explains the built-in foregrip as well. Um, it shoots a special type of 9mm like plus plus or something like that. Uh, it's a Russian cartridge. It defeats small body armor, light body armor, things like that. Um, basically just like the uh, the 5.7s and the H and K and B7 rounds do. Um, and then you probably don't, you aren't able to see it, but right there where my finger is, is a white and red uh, alien rail, ray gun that I built for my sister and my sister didn't want it anymore so she gave it back to me. Um, as there's nothing really special about it, so I wasn't going to go over that. On this shelf, we have a, another recent build. This is the SV-98 Russian Bolt Action Sniper Rifle. I believe this fires 338 Lapua. Don't quote me on that. Um, I've already built... I, I built this one in real life, then proceeded to build it on LDD. And then after I built it on LDD, um, I wanted to challenge myself a little bit more, and I built the Master Edition version of it which has a five stud wide stock and 
full working features. And when I say full working features, I mean the magazine release, the trigger, your bolt action, your stock adjustments, your cheek rest adjustments, your monopod in the back, um, and then the, um, what you call it, the actual, like, the chambering of the round, uh, in the terms that there's a hole where the bolt is, so that when you open the bolt and you put the magazine in, you can see the bullet on the top of the magazine, so uh, that was really cool to do. Uh, so this one's yellow and uh, red. It was a pretty fun build to do. I definitely uh, really hit my yellow uh, reserves pretty hard with that. Uh, and then the Mosin Nagant hit my blue reserves pretty hard. Um, the lower receiver there is just a, an experimental uh, lower. It has an M4 style magazine release. That's the first working one that I built in real life. And then the trigger on it uses a Lego shock absorber, a Lego spring instead of a rubber band so it will never break and that's what's really cool about that um, and then below this shelf we have the uh, Spectre M4 which is a 9mm uh, submachine gun that you saw in the original Black Ops um, it's a pretty unique SMG I really liked using it in Black Ops um, it's definitely fun to run around with run and gun, dolphin dive, you know kill people that way uh, the red gun in the back is the M4 PDW EDW uh, ergonomic version. There was a standard version. This one's the ergonomic version that uses kind of like a P90 F2000 style lower receiver uh, with a P90 style trigger, things like that. Um, that was a pretty fun model to build. It has the Galil 21 styled uh, char charging handle on the other side of the bolt. Uh, it's not in the back of the receiver like most M4s uh, would be. And then beside that is the vector prototype um anastasia's vector prototype uh with the light gray receiver and then the dark gray upper uh in details different things like that that's my first gun to feature a semi working bolt catch in the form that you could push on it and then it's going to push back out at you uh it doesn't actually capture the bolt the bolt uh slipped off the rubber band the bolt is no longer underneath rubber band tension uh and neither is the m4 pdw up there i need to open up both of these weapons and get the rubber band back on the boat bolt um i don't know how much longer i'm going to be able to keep the uh vector i'm debating whether or not i should destroy it to try to make uh some other uh weapon that's a little bit better and whatnot um this one is the 45 acp version i built this before in uh, shot show 2015 they announced the nine millimeter version and different things like that and uh, obviously this was one of the models that has led up to the creation of the Blue Jay Industries Vector 10, or a Vector X, I should say, which is the 5.56 uh, carbine version with a 16-inch barrel, uh, civilian legal, things like that. And moving on down to the lower shelf, we have three guns down here, starting from left to right, like we've been doing for the entire video. Uh, that is the very, very first M4 PDW that I built in real life. It is not the first M4 PDW built in real life. That credit goes out to um, Future Yeti 3. He was the very, very first to build an M4 PDW in real life, and he inspired me to build one in real life as well. Uh, so watching his video, I sorted out some yellow and blue bricks uh, before even I got my Lego bins out. Uh, I used my uh, grandparents' Lego bins uh, first, and then... Uh, built it and over time I've keep kept adding on to it the uh, stock on it's not the same stock I switched out the stock for a, uh, a longer one because that was one of the complaints that uh, Future Yeti 3 had about it that the stock was too short and that it needed a longer stock um, I switched out some of the details on the side of it I switched up some of the mechanisms different things like that uh, and then after a while I got into building a grenade launcher and that's what's sitting on there now you can see the uh, Peacekeeper style foregrip is sitting beside it over there. Um, didn't have the heart to destroy it. Such a cool little uh, foregrip and thing to put on it. So I just didn't want to destroy it. So uh, when I took it off, I just left it off, off to the side. Um, different things like that. So the grenade launcher is sitting down there. And then these two things. The top one is a really, really old uh, pistol. Then that, The backstory about it is that it originally started off as a a uh, blowback M4. There, I found instructions on YouTube of a uh, blowback mechanism for an M4, uh, and it showed the entire receiver of the M4, so I decided to build uh, that. And then that M4 ended up turning into the M4 Spectre that you see there. 
Um, so uh, I, I guess just to make this a little bit easier, this was originally an AR-15 with blowback. I destroyed that AR-15 to use the pieces to build this because it was a little bit easier. And then I kept the blowback mechanism and any piece left over from the M4 Spectre up here was used to create this little uh, futuristic sci-fi style pistol that you see there. Um, that gun no longer functions the proper way it needs to. The gear has completely shattered uh, over the countless times that I've pulled the trigger uh, on blowback. Uh, with stiff rubber bands in it, so I need to get in there, fix the gear, kind of, uh, I'll probably put a little bit of Vaseline on it just to make it uh, work a little bit better, uh, but it's just a futuristic pistol, it's not really based off anything. And then this here is a 22 revolver that I built on summer vacation a long, long time ago. There's a video of me showing it off in the car when we were coming back from uh, summer vacation, and that was a a build that I just couldn't get rid of. It's still a really cool gun to just kind of use as a prop. It looks real cool on the shelf and different things like that. So it's still around with me. Um, so that is literally my full Lego arsenal. That is every weapon that I've, uh, I have built to date. Um, there's so much history here. Uh, and three guns there, three guns up there, which makes six, nine guns right there. Uh, and then another three there for 12. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. We have 20 guns sitting here in real life built out of Legos. And I have no idea if any other people in the world have this many Lego weapons built with them in real life right now. Um, it's a long road and it's definitely uh, hard to do. Um, I'm taking huge, huge hits to uh, different uh, colors of weapons. Or colors of Legos, so like the bl the blue Mosin I got really took a lot of the blue parts that I needed, um, and then the yellow and red uh, SV98 took a lot of yellow pieces I need. I got plenty of red pieces, but I ha no longer have a good surplus of yellow or blue pieces. Um, as part of the special, I was going to turn around and show you guys what I have sitting over here. Um, so we have sorted color bins. Uh, my red and black are almost full. The red one is right there, and then that's the black one. Uh, they're almost full. This one here is an assortment of blue and black that I still need to go through and uh, sort out so I can uh, dump out that bin and use it for other things. Um, that top bin is all Mega Blocks that I've sorted out from all of these pieces, so I'm no longer using Mega Blocks. Uh, that bin, that bin, and that bin still need to be sorted through so I can get all the colors out of them. Uh, that staples bin up there has more Legos in it, and that red bin up there has more Legos in it. Uh, both of those bins need to be sorted, and then those three bottom ones need to be sorted, and the one in the middle up top needs to be sorted. Um, and then, not only that, but all of those bins back there need to be sorted. Aside from this top one right there, because that originally had a mixture of yellow and blue bricks in it from the... M4 PDW right there, but when I was building the SV98 using the yellow bricks, I used most of the yellow left over from that build, which got most of it out of that bin that we were just looking at back there. And then I was left over with blue, and then when I built the